All right, man, got some bad news. A few Detroit Lions have tested positive for COVID. Now, I have another video coming talking about Bob Quinn's decision to uh, keep the roster at 90 and why he's not, you know, obtaining or trying to sign free agents. But also in that video, I kind of talk about, I'm kind of going to jump ahead of that, uh, the testing protocol. They have to test three times negative to be allowed to come to team facilities in the camp. But the three main guys who tested positive for the Lions are Kenny Galladay, TJ Hawkinson, and second-year corner Armani Rockwee. So let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And according to the Detroit Free Press, it says Detroit Lions will be without two, with, without two of Matthew Stafford's favorite targets for the start of the training camp. The Lions plays wide receiver Kenny Galladay and tight end TJ Hawkinson and three other players on the reserve COVID-19 list Wednesday, meaning they either tested positive for the coronavirus or have been in close contact with an infected person. Along with Galladay and Hawkinson, corner, corner Armani Arakwi, also safety Jalen Elliott, and punter, uh, I don't know, Aran Spitz, I don't know this dude's name, whoever the hell he is, who cares about the punter, you know, they moved on from Sam Martin. All right, um, but it goes on. Both Gallery and Hawkinson posted photos and videos of themselves training uh, with others on social media frequently during this offseason. Gallery spent time working out in, with uh, Stafford in California, wide receiver Danny Amendola in Texas, while Hawkinson posted video of working out with San Francisco 49ers tight end George Kittles, his former Iowa teammate, earlier this month. Gallery, who led the NFL with 11 touchdown receptions last season, is expected to sign a contract. That makes him one of the highest paid NFL receivers uh, this summer. Hawkinson, the Lions' first round pick last year, caught 32 balls, 367 year, seven yards, excuse me. As a rookie, he suffered an ankle injury late in the year and finished the season on injured reserve. Throughout the NFL's teams permitted to trim their roster to 80 players. The Lions plan to keep the full 90. I already explained that and got a video talking about that in its totality. Um, Araki and Elliott are ticketed for backup roles in the secondary this fall. I think Armani is going to start, so fuck what they're talking about at some point. An undrafted rookie out of Auburn is uh, the kicker. is expected to compete with Jack Fox for the punter job. The Lions are players underwent the first round of coronavirus testing Tuesday with the second test administered Wednesday. Players who have to pass three tests, and the third test is scheduled for Friday before they're allowed in the building this weekend for physicals and equipment pick up so um not really surprised of course they're going to point out anything you do wrong anything about the protocol you did did you train with people i mean at the end of the day it's been people that come in contact with people that have it that don't get it all right it was a study out there today i think it was from i can't remember what college it was saying if you're over six feet tall you're more you're more susceptible to getting the disease you know they're coming out all these stupid studies stuff of that nature at some point, you feel the majority of people are going to get the virus, and people that said they never had the virus or haven't had it to this point, they probably already had the virus. So I'm not knocking Hawkinson for staying in shape. I'm not knocking Galladay for staying in shape, working out with people. You know, a lot of people are going to get it. It was 100% unlikely that the NFL, the Detroit Lions roster, was going to have anybody that, you know, that didn't have the virus, and that's just the God on the truth. Look at the Marlins. Now they have 18 players of staff that has the virus. The 18th one came out this morning. But at the same time, it hurts because these are supposed to be Stafford's top two targets. But then again, instead of looking at the glass half empty, let's look at the half full. It's good they get this shit out their system now. Facts. It's good that they get it now, whether it be week one or week two or week five. And I said that if you get the virus, you, you more likely can't get it again. We had somebody in the boss community get the virus. He got it again, but it was a false positive. All right. So at the end of the day, and it was some reports coming on early in China that, you know, people was getting the virus again and it was coming back worse. So I don't know how true those, you know, were, but I'd rather them clear the virus out their system now than get it in week eight or week one, you know, in a protocol, which they didn't explain in this article. And I actually, uh, the original article I seen was in the Detroit News. So let me try to pull it up. I'll be glad when this coronavirus is over with so I can get my setup the way I want it. But, um, you know, the protocol for their quarantine is a little bit different. And um, I think I'm trying to find it now. So here it goes right here. If a player tests positive for the virus, and this one is in Detroit News, and is asymptomatic, he can be cleared 10 days after a positive test or five days with two negative tests. Players who are exhibiting 
symptoms are required to be out a minimum of 10 days after the first occurrence of symptoms in 72 hours since symptoms last occurred. Lions players who tested negative for the virus Tuesday will be tested again Friday. If they test negative a second time, they are permitted to enter the team's facility on Saturday for the start of a two-week conditioning. Now, they have two weeks conditioning, and then I think they have a one walkthrough or one non-padded practice or a couple non-padded practice, then they put the pads on. So we do know, if you've been listening to my channel, you follow the NFL, not this last CBA, but the CBA before last, the collective bargain agreement that they agreed on, they took away two-a-day padded practices, you know, so they no longer, I believe, have two-a-day padded practices. And ever since they stopped two-a-day padded practices and gave the owners more money back, it's really resulting in a lot of injuries and season-ending injuries and, and a lot of soft tissue injuries. And um, that's the results of, ha of not having, you know, padded practices, two of them. You know, it conditions the body. The players, you know, they swapped that out and gave the money back to the owners. So now you only got one padded practice, and that's going to be interesting and possibly no preseason. I don't think they are really took a stance on that. But, you know, to be honest, man, anybody can get it. Um, I've known people that had it. I done been in contact with people that had it, and I didn't get it, but I felt I had it in February. So, I mean, you know, you only can do is wear your mask. Don't be part of that community that's against masks. What is it to wear a mask? Now, I understand if you have to work with a mask in a hot factory, then we got an issue. But, you know, just going to the grocery store, you know, going to the Dollar General, Dollar Tree, you know, going to Dairy Queen or something like that, just wear your mask. You know what I'm saying? You get in the restaurant, you go in with the mask. When it's time to eat, take the mask off. Time to leave, put the mask on. That's the only real way that we going to kind of keep these numbers down. But it really doesn't matter about curve and scale until they come out with a cure or vaccine, which FYI, I got a video I done yesterday where Henry Ford is the only health system in Michigan that will be doing trial runs for the vaccine. And I think they're playing people $300 or $1,000 to take the trial run for the vaccine, which, you know, they don't know if it's going to work until early next year. So if you're interested into volunteering for the Henry Ford health system vaccine, the only one in Michigan, you can uh, go to clickondetroit.com and they have the link there. You go to my video, I'll put the article link in the description. Um, so they're looking for 600 volunteers in the, in the state of Michigan and 30,000 volunteers across the country. So, I mean, I'm not mad at none of these young men. Anybody can get it. Um, hopefully they're healthy, you know, hopefully. And none of these dudes are probably considered obese with their height and their size neither. So, um, not sure who else going to test negative or test positive going forward, but I know a lot of people is going to bring some backlash if Stafford had tested positive for working out with people, but it doesn't matter. You can't pinpoint and say, oh, Gallagher got it out working out, working out in Texas with Stafford and Mendola, or Hawkinson got it working out, or he got it on the plane and working out with, with George Kittles. You really don't freaking know. You can get it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You can get it on the airplane. You can get it at the restaurant. You can get it at home from the mail person. Touching them. You just really don't know. And the one that I think it truly hurts is the two young guys, the safety and Amani Iraqui. Most people think Desmond Trufant is going to run away with that job, but I think Amani Iraqui is a better, younger corner at this point, just lacks a little bit of experience in him. But I, I believe all these dudes are going to come in condition anyway. So two-week condition period, I think they're going to come in uh, condition to the T. And they ain't had no problem with their equipments. They know what jerseys number they got. They know what helmets they got. And I look forward to all these brothers uh, getting healthy again. And I really look for big things from Hawkinson. Um, Hawkinson seems to physically um, ready to take the next step. And I think that was his issue last year. Physically was taking the next step as far as he had some holding calls on the line. I think the way some of the coverages played him, he wasn't used to it. So now he'll be able to hold his own power on the line when blocking, run blocking. Staying in the pass block, he'll understand how to sit through the zones. And Daryl Bevel is going to make it a more tight end friendly offense. He better with two good tight ends with Jesse James and TJ Hawkinson. Galladay, I know he's going uh, he to do what he do. He a monster. He work hard. We ain't got no issues with him. But the one guy I'm excited about this year was Imani. And I think he's going to come in shape. He don't have a lot of experience coming out of Penn State, but he looked good at the end of last year. And him and Okuda, I think, could be a good tandem for a long time. Long, athletic, strong. He got good ball skills as well. So praying for all these goods and hoping for the best. But I didn't know they're going to be good to bounce back quicker than the dribble. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you got business question, inquiry, response, video requests. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel? Just share the video, cash out, PayPal, description. And don't forget, check out my other channel, Goodfellas Sports TV, for more sports, music, news, entertainment, and NBA kickoff tomorrow. So we have some content over there for that. 
But hey, let me know what you guys think about the th four or five lines that tested positive. Check the Detroit Free Press news for the articles. One time for the one time. We gone.